be assembled. Now they can proceed with soldering the modules by groups. First, a flux is applied which improves the quality of the soldering. With great dexterity, they assemble four groups composed of nine modules each. In this way, 36 modules are soldered and connected in series. Modules are assembled end to end. They have to be handled with great care. Using a voltmeter, the voltage of each module is verified. At this stage, it's easy to remake a solder connection if there's a problem. If the voltage is adequate, they use suction grips to make handling of the nine rows of modules easier and to keep them clean. The modules are placed into position. Then this metallic strip is inserted, which is a conductor that will link the four groups of nine modules. Solder connections are made to link the modules to the metallic strip. Then they put on this transparent sheet of layered glass. It serves as a rigid transparent form which will support the modules. Superposing of parts forms a laminate which increases the rigidity and solidity of the panel. Finally, a sealing film is applied to protect the module. To laminate and stiffen the solar panel, it's placed in a heated oven from which air has been vacuumed out. The panel will cook at 80 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. The oven hermetically reseals to proceed with the vacuuming out of air. And here's the finished panel. All the components are bonded together. They now proceed with the test. The panel is placed in a solar simulator. Negative and positive contacts of the solar panel are connected to a voltmeter. The panel is inserted into the simulator and a powerful lamp will illuminate it. The voltmeter is read to make sure that panels supply the electric current required. Here now is the assembly of another kind of solar panel called the amorphous silicon type. Its components were made in Europe and Asia. These here are the positive and negative connecting wires of the solar panel. The panel is placed into a plastic frame and glued in place. Then the frame is screwed tight so that it won't move. The solar panel made up of crystalline silicon modules is put onto an ABS plastic frame. It's now finished. Fabricating this panel will have required about one hour of work. Six of them are made here every day. So you think you can make that last quick trip when the gas tank reads empty. This plastic container should come in real handy for the walk to your nearest gas station. Plastic gas containers are made from these granules, composed of a concentrated colorant and a UV-resistant additive. They're mixed with white granules, which is the primary material, called high-density polyethylene, and recycled plastic, which has been ground up in a granulator. It's all dumped into this milling machine. These granules are all mixed together and melted. The melted plastic will be blown in, and will take shape within this mold made of very high quality, dense aluminum, called aviation type. Blow molding continues and produces a soft plastic tube. This is cut and placed in the mold. Then this nozzle pumps the plastic into the mold shell. The container is unmolded and moves along on a conveyor. There's another way to mold plastic, by rotation. This previously colored powder has a 35 mesh size, which is just a little larger than flour. 
Low density linear polyethylene is poured into the bottom of the mold. The mold has a cover which will be well closed then placed on a steel support. This support is articulated by an arm on two rotation axes simultaneously. This action allows the plastic powder to distribute itself thoroughly throughout the mold. The mold is placed in an oven which generates a temperature of 310 degrees centigrade. About 15 minutes is needed for the polyethylene powder to melt and another 15 minutes to allow the piece to adequately cool before unmolding it. The mold cover is lifted off and the plastic piece is unmolded. Gloves must be worn since the piece and the mold are still very hot. Here they fabricate a mechanism cover for a stationary bicycle. It's held in place by a cutting pattern and openings are cut with a pneumatic tool. Holes are made with a drill. The casing is now completed. Now we get back to the previous blow molding process. This type of molding produces residues which have to be eliminated. These surplus pieces are cut with this small saw. The now hardened scraps are sent to the granulator to be reduced into granules which will be newly added into the mixer to make other plastic containers. This small pneumatic drill pierces the container's vent hole. The container circulates from one step to another on the conveyor. The next steps will be accomplished by robotic arms. And then the final elements are attached, such as the pouring